Hello everybody, it's very nice to be back. I've moved house, I'm in a new place. I've started training, a lot of things have happened. But I'm now nearly a month into neurosurgery training, into neurosurgery residency, as of recording this video. This video was actually meant to come out a couple of weeks ago, but I've been really quite ill with some respiratory plague. So I've had a run of night shifts, then that, and been basically completely comatose since. This is a video that I was actually looking forward to making because I spent the second week of my training at the ST1 Neurosurgery Boot Camp. Now this is a national course run every year, now in its 12th iteration as of 2025, where all of the new neurosurgical trainees in the UK come together for a week of learning, and it's a mandatory part of starting our training. Fully funded, centrally organized, so as soon as you get your ST1 post, you are automatically enrolled into this bootcamp program. And doing one right at the start of training is a great opportunity to make sure that everyone is, is at least at the same basic level or a standard floor, so that when we all return back to our home units all across the UK to begin sort of training proper, we go in with a shared toolkit of skills and knowledge because everyone knows the same things, at least at a baseline. It runs right at the start of the process before you, you really hit the wards in earnest, so you're not totally green when that first emergency bleep goes off. So what was covered? Well, a lot. Naturally, the program is very, very intense. There's so much material to get through. There was plenty of core teaching material covering everything from interpreting different types of neuroradiological imaging and the different modalities therein, as well as managing the physiology of neurosurgical patients before a scalpel goes anywhere near them. And as you'd expect, there was a big focus on the emergencies that you're most likely to face early on. Things like acute bleeds within the brain, hydrocephalus, swelling of the ventricles, as well as acute spinal cord compression and cord equina syndrome. It was a very, very practical course. I think that's the important thing. Most of the activities were a hands-on workshop and they involved developing the key practical skills that we will need, such as making incisions in the scalp, drilling burr holes, which is opening a hole, into the cranial cavity and performing craniotomies to obtain access to the inside of the skull. There was a lot of simulation-based training using neuro-navigation systems, drilling into models, basically so that you could make mistakes in a safe environment before facing real patients. And I say a lot on this channel that I'm a big believer in getting the basics right. Again, plenty of emphasis on consenting patients to surgery, explaining risks and benefits properly, positioning people correctly and planning their procedures using brain lab and stealth technologies. This is all about mapping out your approach, planning the surgery based on the imaging so that everyone goes into theater with the same orchestrated view of what's gonna happen. And some of it was personal too, how to manage yourself healthily over a long career in neurosurgery, things like ergonomics and looking after your back and your muscles, how to maintain some semblance of work-life balance, managing interpersonal relationships, all of these other things that are critical for making sure that someone will last all the way through the career, especially at a time when it looks like the retirement age is likely to go up. We are physically going to need to be able to perform neurosurgery for potentially much longer than people that have come before. And there are also some really good talks from senior consultants about the different career paths, research that you might do, leadership in neurosurgery. All of this stuff is actually really inspiring to hear at such an early stage because you've got the view of, well, now you're into the training program, but now the journey is just starting and this is where everything's going. And of course, the other element to all of this is it's the first chance for our cohort to meet each other and all be together in one place. You're placed in the same hotel together for the week. You have all your meals together. You go out in the evenings together across the whole week. And the course directors deliberately allocate us all to mixed different groups on different days. So by the end of the course, you'll have definitely spoken to everyone and done at least one or two activities with them. And it was a really intense week. There were long days, very packed schedules on the days. Then you've got the social in the evening as well but in a very good way, you come out absolutely knackered at the other end, but 
in some sense very energized and excited to start. It all feels so tangible now. And I think, touch wood, our cohort seems like a really, really nice bunch. The mood was really positive. Everyone was really friendly. And honestly, my reflection is what a lovely group of people to get to train with over the next decade. I think neurosurgery doesn't have the best reputation for being full of nice people, even though in reality, people are nicer than they perhaps come across. But I think there is a bit of a sense that when you take a bunch of like really type A sort of overachieving people and then cram them all into one very tiny space, that it can be a bit of a pressure cooker situation. And actually, what a ridiculous bunch of overachievers. Like the number of people when you're hearing everyone's stories, everyone's telling you about their backgrounds and the things they've done to get there and you, you know, your head is spinning, but like all of these people are ridiculous. Like you did what? And so I think finally, just to round off, what an unbelievable job done by the organizers, Mr. Ray and Mr. Fang from the Preston unit. The number of moving parts to this over a week long course, organizing the funding, the space, the food, the workshops where every single workshop needs kit and someone to run it and a rep. I've run one day neurosurgical courses when I was at Queen Square. They take months of organizing to get one day's worth of stuff to come together. This was a full week. It is clearly a monumental amount of hard work to make this thing run. But from a delegate perspective, as someone simply attending and trying to enjoy the ride, it felt like a very well oiled machine and everything ran completely smoothly to time. They managed to keep everyone's attention for an entire week, which is no small feat at all by itself. And similarly, all the incredible faculty that gave up their time to come and teach us, the number of consultants and senior doctors that came to teach us and gave their time to make sure that we develop as safe, confident neurosurgeons who take pride in what we do and doing the best for patients. It's the exact sort of thing that I hope I'm able to be involved with as a consultant one day. I, I think it's staggering. So there you go, my week at boot camp. Thank you very much for listening in. I'm glad to be back. There is so much hard work to come. I've been assigned my neurosurgical portfolio now, which tells me everything that I need to do clinically. My academic work is starting to develop and I'm figuring out what I'm going to be doing. That's most likely going to be working at some intersection of AI, artificial intelligence and the clinical trial space. And trials is not an area that I've worked in before, but have the opportunity to do so. And I think given how rare actually that is in UK neurosurgery, that is an opportunity that I really need to and want to embrace um, because academically I'm still not quite decided what direction I want my career to go in. And as ever, got to figure out how to balance the YouTube channel around all this. Again, there's so much to do. At the moment, given that interview season is coming, I'm veering towards doing some neurosurgery tutorials trying to keep it relevant for people, not necessarily just looking to apply for neurosurgical training, but also looking after neurology and neurosurgery patients because a lot of the principles are, are just good general medicine. So let me know what you think. It's a bit of a blank canvas at the moment while I figure out a set and what I'm gonna do. But again, it's just the next bit of this journey as we close in on 100K, not too long to go. But thank you very much. Take care guys and I'll see you soon.